now. Sick. As I break, I'm pulling that head off. Shit's fucking coming off. What's up guys and welcome to a brand new series. If you've been following me recently, you'll know I'm getting back into that fight life, that fight training style, where we're bringing back that functionality, explosiveness, and still building muscle and a good physique. But I thought, if we're gonna take all this information and put it into a gym, isn't there a real life way we can use this? And there is, that we're able to adapt some of this to self-defense. So I'm bringing in a co-host for this series. Welcome to the little screen, Scott Harvey. Hello. AKA Hazard Harvey. Who is a MMA athlete going pro this year. Yes, yes, that's the plan, that's the plan. You are fighting with who? I'm fighting with SPG in Charleston. Training here for approximately eight years and I'm gonna take you through some self-defense stuff today to help help keep you safe on the street. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you through some of the most common ways that you might find yourself in an aggressive situation, when you find yourself in a confrontational scenario. And we're gonna give you two variations. We're gonna give you the break and escape and the break and bad. <laughs> so one of the most common things that we see in a lot of street fights is gonna be the shirt grab. He's stepping on my testosterone fuel beardness and I'm like, all right, fuck her, I'm having you. I don't know why I went to London and that. I had a good grip and it's a standing one, isn't it? Thinking we're going to pull you about. Yeah, yeah. So you've got to make sure you deal with this grip really, really early. Um, again, especially Lex is a pretty big guy, so I don't want him hanging on to me here for too long and swinging me around. So I'm going to have to get rid of that grip nice and early. First thing I'm going to look to do is I'm going to make sure that I take my right hand, pop it on top of his hand, okay? Really important here that I catch at the baby finger, okay? It's the weakest part of the grip. So I'm going to catch the hand, reach over, and I'm going to peel this hand over. As I peel over, I just turn my shoulder in the direction of his arm. Yeah. Yeah. Peeling that, that hand off nice and quickly. And making sure straight away when I get off this angle is I turn off immediately. I don't want to stay here for any big shots. I'm going to push him off and I'm going to disengage as fast as I can. In real time, you'll be like, all right, grab, bam, pull, gone. <laughs> now. One more little thing to add to that. What would you do if you know they're going to hit you straight off this shot? I'm going to make sure I get my head off this center line. I don't want to leave my head in this line where, again, if that strike's coming, I'm going to eat it. I'm going to make sure the second I grab it up, I'm pulling my head out with that. He's always going to throw it directly to where my head last was. So I'm going to make sure that head is off. As I break, I'm pulling that head off, pushing off, and disengaging quickly. So there you have it. That's the first break and escape. Now for the fun one, the break. And batter. Option number two is where you have been left with no alternative but to make sure that you and the people around you are safe because this boy has got a little bit bouncy, he's got a little bit leery, he's fucking not having none of this, he ain't calming down and he's coming at you. So come in, I'm intent on hurting you now, you've had enough, it's yeah. time to get out there, get yourself safe. Same as the last, I've got to make sure I break that grip and get off that center line, okay? So once I break that grip and get off that center line, I've now cocked my right shoulder for a big shot. So from here, big wide hook, not hitting like boom, turning that hook right in and looking to land a devastating shot. Once I land, disengage and make sure you're safe from there. So we'll just give you a little bit of real time so you can see how it would work. So here I am, fucking, you fucking want something? Do you want something? I've had enough of you, you fucking hate fucking come on in, fucking. <laughs> Okay, so common thing number two would be what is common this thing. You got a fucking throat grab. So we've seen it, we've all seen it, we've come in and they've grabbed your throat. And immediately a lot of people here will panic, you'll just see them pull this face. What's your, what's your solution? So, yeah, you're gonna find a lot of work trying to reach in at that, at that wrist and trying to fight at the hand here. It's an awful lot of work. We need to get out of here quick. We can't afford to be panicking around and flapping. Immediately, right hand comes over at the crook of the elbow. Left hand supports, I'm gonna snap down and step back at the same time. Oh, disengage. Body weight, hips down, body through, boom. So you're stepping back, weight down. Snap. I'll grip quite tight there, you can see you're nice and red. And I'm gonna hop, no chance. No chance. You need to remember as well, on a grip like that on the neck, it's not really much of a grip. There's nothing on the back holding my neck and I can always go backwards. It's more of a squeeze, okay? It's just slightly uncomfortable. All you've gotta do, uh, Straight over the crook of the elbow, support it with my left hand and snap down violently if I'm here and I'm just not making sure you're off balance. So there's your break and escape. Break, break and break and batter. 
Again, you've got a bit lowry. I'm not definitely going to cause you some problems here. So I've come in, grabbed that throat, and you've got, you've got, you've got to just make sure you're safe. Now, put an end to this idiot. I'm going to make sure, again, same thing, right hand over the top. I'm going to snap down fast and hard. Snap. From here, left hand on the head, and I'm going to spike that big right knee anywhere on that center. I'm like, boom, straight up that middle line, okay? Once from there, disengage, okay? So you're just looking to land that knee, biggest side and the biggest mass you can see. It's a shot tactic. It's a shot, like I was saying, gotta land a big, hard shot. There's no point in, in flapping around here again with light shots, nothing, nothing that's gonna be significant. You gotta make sure that you're safe. So you're gonna snap down, in, draw. Cause I'm coming for your throat, so I have intent. You know, definitely, point, definitely. To, to cause you harm. So, in real time, so you guys can see what it will be like. Do you want some? Do you want some? Fuck it! Oh, oh. It's good. Yeah. Okay. The most common thing you'll see, third in line, is going to be when someone. Yeah. The double shirt grab. The double shirt grab. So the double or the double. We've got double shirt. Double throat. Now we're going to show you it from the double throat because this is the most um, confrontational side of it. Here we're a little bit safer, we're not actually having any physical harm at this point. If there's hands on the throat, it's a little bit immediate danger. Yeah, yeah. Most definitely trying to get out of here, okay? So the second they've got those two hands on the next, it's going to be very hard to fight two hands at one yeah, time. I've got a good grip now. There is more of a grip on this. Yeah, because definitely. I've got and, two. and if his <laughs> big is going to crush our neck here pretty quickly, okay? So we've got to make sure that I bring both my hands on the inside to widen this grip. It's strong when it's together. Bringing it in and punching those hands in. From here, I'm gonna push on Lex's chest, but as I push, he's gonna go back. I have to make sure that I slide back as well, okay? So I don't wanna stay here and punch in. I try to push him and he stays there, he's solid. I'm gonna make sure, punch in and push out as well. So that's the, you know, nice breaking escape. Breaking, breaking bad. So I'm in. So he's got to, got to put it down again, he's got a bit lowry, he's come at you. Same thing, punching inside, breaking that grip, okay? From here, we're going to take a double tie clinch, two hands on the neck, okay? From here, I'm going to, I'm going to look to headbutt Lex's nose. I'm making sure that I headbutt with this top part, that comb over part of my hair, lowering myself, driving straight into the nose. I pull his head onto the headbutt, throw him in, okay? Little things to note on that tie clinch, as you come around the back of the head, you're going to have one hand on the back, the other one's going to wrap over and on the top of that, and you're going to push your elbows into their chest. That gives you that real leverage, and you're really doing very little work at that point, so it's really pulling that head in. What we don't want to see is when we've got that clinch, is a wind up, and then come back in, because during that wind up, one, we're losing that, that tension we have here, where we've got control, and two, I'm opening myself up for that. So, in real time, what it would look like. Yeah. Get it works. Hey, right. how's it going? Swing Chun Kid here. Just taking a walk, doing my Qi Gong, and doing my Tai Chi exercise. You know, they say Tai Chi is only good for old people and it's only good for health and fitness. But I say that's wrong, because Tai Chi means grand ultimate fist in China. And the most powerful fighters at that time used Tai Chi. So I'm gonna show you how to use it in the street self-defense. Because attacks can come at any time, any moment. All right, in this video, we're gonna show you the top five most powerful Tai Chi techniques you can use in self-defense. Here we go. Yo, what's up? Welcome to Tai Chi's most powerful five techniques. We're gonna start with technique number five, cloud hands. Look, like this. It's very nice and peaceful, and very fluffy and very soft. That's what we call it, cloud hands. As if you are creating clouds with your hands. All right, so if it's stationary, this is how it looks like. Let's just isolate one hand. Okay, notice my whole body is moving my hand. It starts with the rotating of the hips, up to the movement of the shoulders, up to the movement of my shoulders, and then my elbow joint to 
my wrist joint to my fingers. Okay, so the whole body needs to be coordinated. That's just one hand. Now we combine two hands at the same time. It's gonna look like this. Now in the form, we have movement. So it's gonna look like this. Step, so you need to coordinate the steps with the cloud hands, okay? Going this way. Okay, in some forms we see a cross step like this. Okay, so either way you do it, as long as you have this motion, then that's correct. Okay, make sure you're using your whole body and see every connection is there. Some details you want to notice is that when I'm coming up, my fingers point upwards. Then I flip it, and then when I'm coming down, as if I'm painting a wall with my fingers. And then when I come down, and then down here, I'm scooping up, and then my fingers point upwards again. So then when I'm here, I rotate out, and then I paint down with my fingers. All right, so those are just some details of the form. I'm gonna show you how to use it in application. First way of movement is the parry and punch. Okay, so it's good if you come up close to go like this. First of all, let's focus on the parry. Okay, so if you come out this way, the parry, right? Parry and grab. Parry and grab. Okay, so that's the first you need. Now we remember it's both at the same time, right? So we parry and punch at the same time. Okay, and I showed you with the other hand it comes. Just do it in the other arm. And you can do another punch. But in this case, since I'm behind him, I'm just gonna step and do another one here. Okay, so you can either keep your hand here because we just grabbed this. Notice in some forms they do that. You have the bird speak. What this is, is actually just holding the wrist reason they do this with the first three fingers is they want to emphasize that you don't want to use all the force and grab on tight. You're just grabbing on this much so that you can let go. You can pull, let him go. It's okay. We're not trying to force anything in Tai Chi. Everything is smooth and everything goes with the flow. So if you want to grab, I'm just grab lightly with three fingers. Okay, that's the concept. Okay, I can grab like this, but it's always just a light grab. Okay, so I've got the deflection on this side. I move in behind them. I've got my birds here you can go this way this way doesn't matter I get up to his chest and then I sink it down his chest right so a common well you can't really say mistake but a common thing that people do is they want to push this way which may or may not work but what ends up happening is just like that it doesn't fall it just goes that way okay what I like, I like to do is use the cloud hands movement comes down in the circle, right? It's a circle. It's not out. It's actually down. So let's try to see the difference. If I go out, that happens. If I go down, that happens. Okay, so you want to use it like that if you want to take the guy down. Alright, so that's cloud hands. Technique number five. Lately I've been doing shit.